let's chill out here for a minute and figure this out. Maybe we don't need to, to fight or flee. Maybe there's some third option. Maybe we can reason with the enemy, right? Oh my goodness, really? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe we can just be quiet and sit together. People are transformed through silence, you know, but in this culture we're told we always have to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So, guess what controls the nervous system, the breath? Now, doctors know that when you start breathing deeply and they can hook you up to a little, you know, the little monitor machine that, that can interpret your brain waves and your heart rate and all of this stuff, they can see it. They can see that you are slowing down your own heart rate through deep breathing. Every time you take a deep breath, you trigger your parasympathetic nervous system. You trigger the brakes of the whole system. Your heart rate slows down. And when your heart rate slows down, your emotional state starts to change. Your anxiety rate starts to slow down. Everything starts to open up. Your perceptions change. So, you're able to control what psychiatrists call the panic response. You calm the mind, you alter your perception. The yogis would say you're opening up your chakras, those little energy centers that lie along the spine. The little super highways by which prana flows if your body is kept pure. You see how we start to connect all these ideas now? While you breathe, you breathe your way into the poses and out of the poses. And as you breathe, you're able to monitor your own exertion because you can hear your breath and you can hear it if you're overdoing it. And you can slow yourself down accordingly. You can also stay present because if you forget about your breath, chances are your mind is elsewhere. So your breath keeps your mind engaged. It keeps you present. It keeps you focused. And also, in a practical sense, that oxygen feeds your cells. It's the mitochondria that lives inside your cells that works with the oxygen and that spins your metabolism. Your metabolism is the fire inside of you. It's the life force inside of you. So without oxygen, nothing really works right. So it helps your body work better. It helps your mind stay present and focused. It helps the parasympathetic nervous system stay calm. You're dealing with panic responses, all of those things. It stills the turbulence of what yogis and monks call the monkey mind. Breathing does all of that. So when I say, my gosh, pranayama, you know, might sound like a simple one. We're just talking about breathing. But it does all of that. It's like this magical, you know, little, little uh, self-treatment system we have access to. 24 hours of the day, you can breathe your way out of it, whatever it is. Number five, withdrawal of the senses, pratyahara. Resisting distractions, resisting distractions. Remember when we, you know, we, of course, we have to have humor about ourselves and about what else can we do? We can laugh or cry about the human condition, right? It's, it's funner to laugh about it. And I was saying, hey, when you're late, everybody's going to turn to the door and look at you. That's just what people do. What? Who's that? You know, it's just like a reflex. But you know what? You know, talking seriously now, getting into heavy-duty yogic philosophy, you can learn to resist those distractions, you know, not just when someone walks in late. But if you do decide that you like this meditation business and you want to continue it, you can practice pratyahara and be more successful in your practice once you learn to, to nurture this ability to concentrate and to resist distractions. But it's not just in the spiritual <coughs> context. I've had people come to take tests in my class with earplugs and uh, all kinds of little gadgets because they're so easily distracted that they can't take a test with any kind of noise in the room. But see, you're making, you're, you're trapping yourself again like that because now you're making the world be the way you need it to be, right? Yeah. But the world will never be the way you need it to be all the time, will it? The world is a very non-cooperative place, unfortunately, right? So what would be a better antidote? Get used to it. To train yourself to not be so easily distracted. So you can take your test. 
you know, for very practical reasons, because you want to take your test and get out of there and move on, right? So it's a, it's a pretty advantageous thing on the practical plane or the spiritual plane, you know, whichever one you happen to be interested in. You don't have to be interested in developing a spiritual practice, but you're here to learn about it anyway, even if you decide that uh, it's not something that you'd like to personally adopt. It's nice to know, what is it those yogis are up to? What is the renunciate's life all about? That, that's what we're looking at. Why is he renouncing? Well, he's practicing pratyahara. He's withdrawing because he doesn't want to be a slave to the senses, just what Paramahansa talked about. One way to look at it is, again, um, from the, the context of energy. Every time you allow yourself to be pulled this way and that way by this distraction and that distraction, you're losing energy. You're losing prana. Hey, Joe, come over here. Okay. Hey, you. Uh, uh. You're just scattered all over the place. So, from a practical point of view, you don't get anything done. But from another point of view, you're dispersing your energy all over the place and you really don't get anywhere like that. You're just scattered and fragmented and schizophrenic all day long at the whim of the world, right? You lose your energy. But you also set yourself up for burnout in relationships and jobs because you don't have the ability sustained within you to stay focused on a task and to choose where you want to put your energy. You're willy-nilly everywhere. You allow those situations to, to sap your strength. I want to come back to that point of concentration now. I'm so glad it was brought up because now it's going to come up in the context of step six. We're on six already. And then the other yogas will go faster, so fear not. Number six. Number six is dharana, which is concentration dharana. It's just all about emptying your mind of, again, disruptive, disturbing uh, thoughts, which compose what yogis call the monkey mind. I want to tell you a story. There's an Indian man named Heep Seti, and I hope I'm saying his name right, Heep Seti. It might be Heat City or Heat City. Have you heard the name? Anybody play billiards? Any pool champions in here? I'm not champion, but I play. But you like to play? So you, you're going to like this story. This Indian man, of course, he had to be Indian, right? Heat City won the world, not just the Indian championships, the world championships in billiards eight times. Eight times. Eight times. This is true? Yes, true. Eight times. And he was interviewed. You know, how do you do it? What, what is your secret? How do you win the world championship in such a competitive sport? Geometry. Eight times. Are you good at that? No. Geometry. No. Concentration. Yes. <laughs> Duh. Right one. Hey, I mean, look what I just wrote on the board, right? <laughs> you guys are letting yourselves spin willy-nilly. She's staying with, what's, with what we're doing. <laughs> well, it wasn't just concentration. He said, there has to be two things in place. You know what those two things are? You're going to be surprised by this. Obsession and concentration. Now, there's a word that has a negative connotation in our Western culture, right? You know, we don't want to have obsessions. That's what we want to avoid, right? 